welcome back guys so yes today we'll have the look at writing the general syntax for a program in C what I precisely mean by this is today we'll study the general syntax of writing the function main in C now underline it writing the function main yes of course this is completely new to you now very first and foremost thing is the general syntax that I'll be putting it over here guys for you and I absolutely don't expect that you understand each and every element mentioned out in the general syntax what I expect from you is temporarily just by heart the stuff I repeat temporarily just by heart the stuff that is what is absolutely needed in the initial phase Later on, as we move ahead, each and every element that I'll be mentioning out in the general syntax will be crystal clear with you. That is my promise. So here we go with it. So yes, I, as I said, what are we exactly going with? So yeah, C by Yash, C notes. Okay. So what, what exactly are we going? So we are studying the general syntax we are studying the general syntax of writing a program we are studying the general syntax of writing a program or precisely you can call it as the general syntax of writing main in C in C so this is what we are moving with right so now why is this required exactly means what is the importance of it means you know See now guys, as of now we are comfortable with algorithm, flowchart, history of C, the basic elements that we have seen out, right? Very soon, now we'll be starting with the practical sessions of it. We'll be creating small, tiny programs out of it. The very first typical program of displaying hello world onto the output screen that is console that we need to practice it out. And along with that, lot of elements, lot of further stuff that we are about to study. So for that, it is very required to get yourself comfortable with the pattern of writing a program. At least you should understand the way a program has to be created in C. That is why I, I expect you guys to buy heart it temporarily. Now, why, why, why am I saying that by heart it? The reason behind it is lot of elements involved in this general syntax are having a further reference to it. It is very difficult at this level to understand each and every element to the crust of it. Although I'll be explaining it right now to you, but I don't expect you understand the complete stuff out of it. Just, just let the word you know, pass through ear, your, your ears, L just get a comfort over that, L just listen at once, that is what is expected out. And the only thing that you will be learning out from this is, you need to by heart the general syntax, that's it, initially. So guys, here I go with it. The general syntax of writing a program in C tells you to start it with hash include, hash include, in angle bracket, you will be specifying something like stdio.h hash include stdio.h this is what you will be writing it initially now those who are a bit comfortable with c those who are a bit comfortable with c might guess it in the way that okay, sir, after that you will be specifying hash include conio.h hash include conio.h now this is where I want to clear out the stuff at the initial level itself. See guys, we are learning the C which is certified by UNC. UNC stands for American National Standards Institute. We are learning the C which is developed by Richie Kearney and his team at at and lab in London and which is further certified by UNC. We are learning UNC C. And you all would be surprised to listen out the stuff that in UNCC you have nothing termed as conio.h. Conio.h, this header file, conio.h, this header file do not belong to the standard set of C 
which is released out in the market so if you will be working with any professional ide that ide won't support your source code if conio.h is involved in it the reason is pretty simple as i said conio.h is not a part of the standard ancc which is certified out and which we are supposed to learn conio.h is typically supported out you know ki in old days people used to be comfortable with the turbo c the dos based ide so turb on turbo typically this conio.h was used for no reason actually whatever you get from conio.h is already provided by the standard set of library which you already have it in c the c standard set of library is already giving you everything which is actually you're using from the conio.h in some cases so here i recommend you not to use conio.h and even in the subsequent sessions out never ever i'll be using this conio.h conio.h do not belong to the standard set of c so we are going to avoid it and this is a note kind of thing for you so now this is this is what will not be requiring it out so forget it hash include std io.h then i go with int main now again those who are a bit comfortable with c there are a lot of ways in which you you might have observed the main function being written out some people write it like void main this is the typical form in which main is written some of you might have might be comfortable with the format in this int main did you got my point some of you might be comfortable with int main in bracket void is written in some cases so which is the exact standard syntax means which one to choose whether to write void main whether to write int main just out of a curiosity float main is it valid yeah we are going to discuss all these concepts in a great detail so time being let me emphasize on the very standard syntax that will be putting and that is going to be at, at, at the initial level it will it is going to be int main in bracket you will be specifying void int main in the bracket you will be specifying void followed by that you need to have a opening block opening block refers to the opening curly bracket opening of a block and of course every opening block in c needs to have a corresponding closing so this is what i have the closing of the block and all together the pair of opening and closing curly brackets serves as the block and within this block within this block you will be having the so called statements statement means what it is just the instruction to the computer statement here i represent it as a statement so that is that is what you will be having guys all right so this is how a general syntax that you have and at the last at the last it is suggested to have written zero and this is what is supposed to be the general syntax of writing a program or we can say general syntax of writing the function main in c this is how it looks like now as i said i just want you guys to by heart this template just the the word that i'm using is just by heart it initially i don't think it's that difficult to by heart it it's 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 you know a very simple task that i'm expecting out from you in due course of time each and every element involved in it will be crystal clear that is my word yeah of course those who are a bit comfortable with c for them over here i'll like to discuss upon the elements involved in it so for rest of the crowd i don't believe that you you understand the discussion that i am going through over here right now okay so what what exactly is this hash guys i mean what is this hash let's have a talk about it so in the later course of time we are going to study a very beautiful topic and that is called as pre processor we'll be studying a topic pre processor in which in which i'll be emphasizing on the pre processor directives 
there are a lot of preprocessor directives so the thing is each and every preprocessor directive actually starts with the symbol hash each and every preprocessor directive starts with the symbol hash over here over here this is the hash include so this is the include preprocessor directive that you are using i repeat which which directive are you using from the set of different preprocessor directives you are using the include preprocessor directive over here so just a note kind of thing for you so over here i can say that hash represents the preprocessor directive i can say hash represents the start of start of some preprocessor directive and yes of course i'll be completing it out over here here we are using here we are using include preprocessor directive here we are using include preprocessor directive all right that is that is what is happening out over here now in the angle bracket in the angle bracket you have specified std io dot h in the angle bracket you have specified std io dot h so this is nothing but it's the name of the header file it's the name of the header file lot of header files are present in the standard set of c as prescribed by ansi std io dot h is one of it std lib is one of it math dot h is one of it signal dot h that you are having string dot h is one of it so lot of header files are available out of which over here we are using std io dot h so let me go with it std io dot h what is it it's the name of the header file it's the name of the header it's the name of the header file all right std io stands for standard input output it stands for standard input output std io okay that is fine so yes std io as i said it's the header file now what is a header file what it contains what exactly is happening out over here the you know importance of it the need of it every minute detail i'll be covering out in the in the chapter preprocessor so just hold on for that particular moment now guys as we have just started out for the discussion over here so let me clarify one thing here is a question for you uh, he just a question for you so just observe out the very first statement so here we have specified hash include and in angle bracket i have specified std io dot h in angle bracket the brackets that i have used over here is angle bracket the pair of you know opening and closing angle bracket in some cases you will be observing the use of double quotes in some cases you will be observing the use of double quotes instead of angle bracket while including a particular header file so my question over here for you guys is this is just that we are mentioning out the question so the question out over here is so what is the difference in including in including the header file header file using using angle bracket using angle brackets and double quotes so yes as i said guys the discussion is completely irrelevant right now further ahead in the due course of time i'll be practically providing a proof of it and yes of course with the practical demonstration i'll be telling you what exactly the difference comes out to be but right now just for your understanding let me tell you the stuff whenever angle bracket is used i repeat whenever angle bracket is used at that time the particular header file 
is searched in complete system in complete system everywhere a search would be carried out for that particular header file in your system this is going to happen when when you will have the angle bracket being used that's great what happens when double quotes is used so whenever double quotes is used at that time at that time the search for that particular header file is done in the current working directory itself at the current drive itself so further ahead we are also going to learn how to develop our own header files and the importance of it and we'll be also including those user defined header files into our source code so guys at that time we'll be using typically the double quotes for the header file inclusion so whenever double quotes is used at that time the system is going to search for that particular header file in the current working directory at the current location so typically double quotes is used for including the user defined or user created header files so that comes out to be different so i'm not i'm not going to put anything detail about it over here right now we are going to discuss it in a great detail in the chapter preprocessor in which we'll be discussing how to create our own header files as well in which we, there is a very important beautiful concept called as header guards that i'll be explaining out to you okay fine so this is this is fine as of now so yeah let's talk about this this statement over here what exactly is happening what what is what are we doing hash include stdio.h in very raw terminology the meaning of this comes out to be we are actually including the content of stdio.h into our source code try to understand it guys stdio.h it's a header file it is built in it is provided by ancc as a part of standard c it is a library it's a built in c library stdio.h it's a header file so what are you doing is the actual content of header file stdio.h that actual content you are trying to include into your source code for some reason so in the process of execution before compilation there is pre processing which is done on your source code so in the process of pre processing what happens is this this statement is erased out this completely this this complete instruction set is erased out and in the place of that what you will have is you will have the actual content of stdio.h being substituted and why do we require the actual content of stdio.h that is not a part of discussion right now but this is just for your understanding this is what you are doing you are actually including the actual content of the header file stdio.h that is what is actually required out to you so here i go with it hash include in angle bracket stdio.h that is required okay beautiful so yeah let's move with the next element so what is this int what is this int over here so guys see this main is nothing but this is actually a function that we are defining again i repeat in c subsequently further ahead a very beautiful topic we are going to discuss for a very long time and that is function over there you will get a crystal clear idea about the need of functions and the way to implement it but for your understanding what is happening over here is you are actually defining a function of your own and purposely you are keeping the name of it as main now if someone asks you what is main is it a user defined function or is it a built in function 
please answer it it's a user defined function it's not a built in one the reason is who is who is defining this function who is creating it who is providing the implementation for this function it's you 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 are providing you the programmer the developer it's your job to create out the function main you are writing it you are coding it so it's a user defined function so yeah this is also a question for you guys so yeah this is just we are putting whatever is you know in the discussion whatever questions are arising out for your understanding i'm just putting it main main is it a user defined function or a built in function so yeah the answer is what guys the answer to it is it's a user defined it's a user defined function and hope you got the reason behind it it's it's because we are creating the function we are coding it out we are writing it so naturally it has to be a user defined function user created function fine so what i what what, what exactly was i discussing out i started the discussion with this int that you can observe out so what is it so this int is nothing but it specifies the return type for the function main it specifies i repeat it specifies it specifies the return type of the function of the function main main is nothing but it's a function it's a user defined function so this int that you can observe it is the return type for the function main now here guys there is a bit you know a point to be discussed out so some people write it as void main some people write it as int main some of you if you are comfortable with c to some extent you might have observed a tryout or you might have done it on yourself and surprisingly you'll be you know surprised to listen the fact that even even if i if, if even if i write float main that is also perfectly valid and the program runs fine it has to run so what is the meaning of it means what is void main what is int main why this float main is also working what am i supposed to write so guys in c and c++ now c is developed by dennis ricci brian kerney and the team c++ is developed by jane strustrup jane strustrup so creators of c and c++ tells you to respect one thing and that is they have they have suggested you to keep the return type of the function main as integer i repeat the developers of c and c++ have suggested you to keep the return type of main as integer and what is the function main supposed to return here you can observe it out return 0 return 0 what is the meaning of it the function main is supposed to return a quantity which specifies the status of the execution so this this complete stuff is just a convention out guys this is just a protocol that we we are following developers of c and c++ want us to keep the return type of the function as int and the function main actually should return a quantity and the quantity that you are returning specifies the status of the execution that is what is the complete story is so whenever you are putting down your code always stick to int main never you are supposed to write it as void main it is just to follow the protocol for example even whenever you'll be going through your drive process interviews and all might be you'll be asked to put down a very simple piece of code so put a habit not to write void main 
always stick to int main that is what the point is so int it specifies the return type of the function main so not in a great detail i'll be putting it over here right now come again ahead now what is this main what is this just i'm talking about main so this is nothing but it is the name of the function main is what it's it's the name of the function it's the name of the function okay great that means you are you are defining a function of your own over here and to that function you are supposed to keep the name to it as main now what is the importance of this function guys the importance of this function is program execution always starts with main whatever program you have created now what is a program program is nothing but it is the set of well defined instructions those well defined instructions ideally are supposed to execute top to bottom as per the sequence that you have mentioned out so this execution should start from some particular point isn't it means in algorithm the very first step that you have is start what is the purpose of that the purpose is there should be a triggered out means the execution should start from some particular point there should be a entry door through which the the control the execution environment actually enters out and then the actual execution of each and every subsequent statement has to go on so this is nothing but this purpose is served by the function main that is the importance of main program execution always starts with main main serves as the entry point for your program execution so yeah what is it main it's the name of the function and something about main that i'm mentioning it out is program execution is supposed to start with main 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 serves as the entry point for your program execution that is what it is main serves as the entry point for your program execution now again a note kind of thing for you guys because we are discussing the stuff actually you know to the crust of it means any single thing which is not correct which is incorrect which is fake that is what i don't want to discuss out with you unnecessarily and of course i even don't want you guys to confuse unnecessarily so that is why separately i am putting it in a note kind of thing for you so what did i said what did i said for you right now i told you that program execution always starts with main all right and main is supposed to be the entry point for the program execution yes of course it's right it's right to some extent it's right with the respect that you are beginner to see your learning c so for you that is what you should have in your brain nothing else but just a note kind of thing is my dear understand the stuff that there are ways wherein you can have the program execution from somewhere else and not necessarily the function main and this is applicable with respect to c with respect to c++ even with respect to java so here i say not necessarily always the program execution starts with main there are ways there are ways using which using which we can have the program execution from somewhere else from somewhere else that is other than main did you got my point so here we are discussing c programming right so in c programming you have been provided with a preprocessor directive hash pragma 
hash pragma is provided in C. Hash pro pragma is provided in C. It's a preprocessor directive. So using hash pragma, you can have the execution. You can have the program execution from some other function other than main. Even in, in case of C++ as well, a rule is there and the rule is global variables are created before main. So in case you have a global variable defined and fortunately let's say that the global variable is getting initialized by a return value of some particular function. So in that case to create that look to create that global variable to create that global variable you will observe the function getting called first are you getting my point what i'm telling see here let's let's observe it out let's say int main okay fine this is this is what i have all right all right this is what i have this is, this is what i'm discussing with respect to c++ guys int main this is what i have and let's say that i have defined a global variable over here so let's say integer a is equal to 10 this is what i have done so do you do you know the rule the rule is global variables are always created first and then the program execution starts yeah of course from main so this a will be created first and then the program execution will start all right that is beautiful so can I have the global variable initialized by the return value of some particular function? Can I have a function like let's say foo? Can I have a function call like let's say I'm calling a function foo? So to create this global variable first, can I observe the function foo being executed before main? Yes, indeed you will be observing the function foo getting executed before main and of course you have to declare it you have to define it you, you need to follow the protocols and all so that is that is what the point is and yeah one more thing the rule is also applicable in C means if you're talking about the creation of global variables then let me tell you in C as well, global variables are created before main. But the problem is in C, you cannot have a function call globally. In C, you cannot have a function call globally. That is the reason why if you will be having this as a part of C code, means if this is a part of C code dot C file, then that is an error. That is not going to work in C, but if it is a .c pp file, then of course it is perfectly fine and you will be observing the function foo getting called before main. So yeah, this is just a rough discussion for you. Now let's talk something about Java if you are a bit comfortable with it. So in Java as well, you have the concept of static block. So static block is something which executes before main. So yeah, when we'll be subsequently going with the Java tutorials as well, I, over there I'll be explaining out each and everything in a great detail to you guys. So yeah, here, what were you we talking about? We were talking about the importance of the function main. So at the initial level, as a beginner of C, as a learner of C, don't get into all these extra details. Just remember the fact that program execution always starts with main and the importance of main is main serves as the entry point for your program execution that is what you need to remember out so over here do you want something something do you want me to write something yeah i'll i'll, I'll complete it so hash pragma is provided in c okay it's a preprocessor directive it's a preprocessor directive full stop using this we can we can have the execution of some other function i mean other than main 
other than main. So it's a preprocessor directive. Using this, we can have the execution of some other function other than main. So that is that is what you have it in C. If you want me to talk something about the C++ that the stuff that I discussed out, I'm, I'm, I'm fine to do it. So yes, of course, in C++ as well, global variables are created before main. In C++ as well, the global variables are created before main. So if a global variable, so if a global variable is initialized, is initialized by the written value of some function, then you can observe, you can observe that function getting called, you can observe that function getting called first. And why is, why is that function getting called? for creation of the global variable, of course, for creation of the global variable. So you can observe that function getting called first and then your main and then your main will start the execution. Then your main will start the execution. This is this is what I mean by that, guys. And whatever I've mentioned out over here, is it applicable for C as well? Means the rule, is it applicable for C as well? Yes, of course, the same thing is applicable in C as well. But in C, you won't be able to have a look at this. The tryout won't execute practically. The reason is in C, you cannot have a function call globally. Means you can't call a function globally in C. So here as well, a note kind of thing. This won't work in C, this won't work in C because in C, the function call, the function call can't be global. You can't have a, a, a function call global in C. All right, so that is fine guys. Okay, so that, 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 that's it, something about this function main. So main, the importance of main is what? main is nothing but it is the entry point for your program execution program execution will always be supposed to start with main now over here there are a lot of ways by which people write main the typical one is the typical one you you, you might have observed is I, i'll go with it the typical one is people write main and the brackets are empty. You got my point? People write main and the brackets are empty. In this case, I have explicitly specified void inside the brackets. So what is the meaning of it? Means what is this specifying? How is this different from, how is this different from the main, which is having nothing written inside? So guys, let me tell you one thing. Whenever you specify void inside, inside any, I mean, in this case, it's main. Whenever you specify void inside the round brackets of main, then the meaning of it comes out to be, in this case, the function is requiring no any argument of any data type the function is requiring no any argument nothing has to be passed as an argument to the function main so guys main is nothing but it's a function in case of functions you have the arguments to it some arguments are there for a particular function in initial days means whenever you're talking about main as a programmer in the initial days uh, until we understand at least some basic assignments some basic programs we are never ever going to pass any argument to main till that particular point 
So for those cases, whenever it comes to the coding part, the appropriate way to write main is I should write main and in the in the bracket, I should specify void explicitly. So whenever void is specified at that time, it, it means that the function main is accepting no any argument of any data type. Nothing has to be passed to function main. That is the meaning of it. The main function is requiring no any argument. You're not having a compulsion to pass any argument of any data type to the function main. That is what is getting explicitly specified out over there. So this is the way you will be writing main. Okay. When you don't want to pass any argument to it. Now, this is also a surprising thing for you. Those who are a bit comfortable with C might understand what I'm speaking. So here as well, you have a question. So the question could be in C or let's say the question is also applicable to C++ in C, C++, do we have arguments to main? Do we have arguments to main? If yes, which are the arguments? If yes, specify those. If yes, please specify those. All right. So guys, now let me complete it. In C, the function main also has some appropriate arguments if required. That is what is termed as command line argument. The, the discussion is in the chapter in, in the topic called as command line argument in which you will be taught with the stuff how to pass arguments to the function main means like you can pass arguments, you can pass data to some normal function defined by you in the same way. It is also possible to pass arguments to main. And yeah, do you want to listen out the arguments that you have to the to the function main? So let me put it for you. So int main in bracket, the first argument is integer type and generally we call it as ARGC. And the second argument is an array of pointer to character. So generally you can say char star star ARGV, a double pointer. This is also fine. This is also fine. If you'll specify it in, it in this way or else, or else if you want to specify a R G V and array explicitly, that is also fine. Array and pointer is one and the same array and pointer is absolutely the same. You'll come to know when we'll be subsequently moving ahead. So, so the point of discussion over here was, do you have arguments to main if required means what are the arguments to main actually in C, C++? So in C, C++, the function main have two arguments. The first argument is of integer type and the second argument is a double pointer of type char or you can say the second argument is a array of pointer to character. And this complete discussion is there in the topic called as command line arguments. So yeah, for your understanding, let me put it in C, C++, we do have arguments to the function main. We do have the arguments to the function main. The first argument, the first argument is of int type. Now I'm, I'm not going to specify what it specifies. What is the meaning of it? Because it's completely out of the scope right now. We are going to discuss it in a great detail ahead. So nothing to worry about. Just hold for that particular point. So the first argument is of int type and generally the standard tells you to have the name of it like ARGC. ARGC is the standard name to it. And of course you are free to change these names as you want. The first argument is of int type, right? The Second argument, the second argument is of, you can say, pointer to 
pointer to care this or you can even read it as array of pointer to care both are one and the same so in c c plus plus we do have arguments to function main that is two arguments that you are having the first argument is of integer type and the second argument is of pointer to pointer to care type so this is what it is guys so let's move ahead with this so i hope i have cleared out the stuff what is the importance of this now this is what you have this is the opening of the block and this is supposed to be the closing of the block this represents the opening block and this is the closing block and altogether the pair of opening and closing this is what we consider it as the body of the function main the body of the function main means that body is going to hold the set of the required statements so yes over here i can go with it what is this what is this this represents what it's the it's represent the opening of the block it is the opening of the block now what is this one this is the closing of the block all right and the, and the complete pair means when all together you are talking about both the stuffs that all together opening and closing pair of curly bracket will represent block of main <laughs> that is also termed as block of main function main block of function main so when when it comes to when it when it, when it comes to this one all right in between you will be having these statements so what is this this is what this is nothing but it is supposed to be the block this is the block of function main so when it comes to the technical definition of function some people state it like function is a block of code so the meaning of it is they are referring to the block that that the function is holding out in case of main in case of main you can observe this is the block of main which is holding the subsequent statements all right okay that is fine so nothing to explain in this over here you will be having the statements uh, yeah of course every statement in c actually represents a instruction to the computer and every statement in c ideally is supposed to terminate with a semicolon that is the way to form it out and it will be representing some instruction for your computer those statements will be executed following the top to bottom approach sequentially so like you have algorithm algorithm is executed sequentially as per the steps mentioned out in the same way when it comes to main and when it comes to the instructions that you have inside main all those instructions will be executed sequentially and at the last before executing i mean before completing out the main you are supposed to specify something called as return zero and then that that you are having a semicolon to it so let me copy it and now let me talk something about it what is this what is this return zero what is the meaning of it what is this so yeah guys in the topic called as functions i'm i'll be discussing in a great detail about one of the statement and the name of the statement itself is return return is an return is a statement available in c i repeat return is a statement available in c using which using which you are allowed to send the control back to its caller it's very difficult to understand right now again i repeat i don't expect you guys to understand whatever i am mentioning it out over here i just want you guys to concentrate on the general template and get it by hearted and it's again my word that each and everything mentioned out over here will be crystal clear in due course of time you need to be patient you just need to be with me i am assuring you that you will be understanding it so out of that what i'm exactly expecting is ki at least have a look at that at least hear it get yourself comfortable with the terminologies with the phrases with the sentences 
with the elements that the different elements that i'm speaking about that's it just lean back relax and hear what i'm speaking so yeah i i was talking something about the statement return so yeah what is it return is nothing but guys it's a statement in c which is used to return the control explicitly back to its caller and over here you are doing the same thing and along with the control like a attachment you are passing the value zero you are attaching the value zero along with the control zero is nothing but it is representing the status of your execution so here i go with it so return is one of the statement in c return is one of the statement in c using which using which we can explicitly return using which we can explicitly return the control back to its caller back to its caller we can explicitly return the control back to its caller further along with the control further along with the control further along with the control we have a we have a provision we have a provision of attaching in very raw terminology i'm using the word attaching further along with the control we have a provision of attaching or let's say sending some data some value here here the value zero here the value zero here the value zero is being attached is being attached it represents it represents the status of the execution it represents the status of the execution are you getting my point so over here i i i said something that using return statement we can return the control back to its caller now what is the meaning of it back to its caller who is the caller caller means what caller means that person who is calling the function main from inside from your system in from inside of your system the main function is getting called from inside your system the main function is getting called main is being called by someone from inside so that someone is supposed to be the caller of main that someone is supposed to be the caller of main so yes do you want to listen who is that person that is supposed to be the startup code it's a entity guys so again who is the caller for main who is the caller for main who calls main yeah it's the startup code it's the start up code which calls main which calls main from inside so startup code so startup code serves as the caller for the function main are you getting this guys yeah so this is what we have the discussion about the elements over here and whenever it comes to the source code again i repeat whatever i have discussed out beneath i don't expect anything from you i don't expect that you understand you by heart whatever i have mentioned out in the comments and the explanatory part that i have provided to you what i expect is i just want you guys to get yourself comfortable with this general syntax only by heart it by heart it and let it be part of your source code for few days what is the meaning of it means slowly steadily we are going to do some programming we will be creating few programs right that program that program means the there there will be a file in which you will be putting down some stuff right that file is nothing but that is going to be your source code 
source code means what the actual code of C so in the source code this is the general template that will be using and that is why I just want you to by heart it nothing else is expected out and as I said in the due course of time each and every element that I've mentioned out will be crystal clear to you guys that is my word only you need to be patient for some time and just you need to trust me and move along with me that is what I can say over here right now so yeah that is what I have in the general syntax of writing a program or general syntax of writing a main in C so see you soon in the next subsequent topic so thank you so much